Hi everyone and welcome to a Tech Bytes DIY session. Today we're going to be designing and creating a switch for the fourth and fifth mouse buttons of the X Keys L Track trackball mouse. Uh, now, if you haven't seen the review that I've done on this particular trackball, please check it out. It's linked in this video. Um, I go into a lot of details about how easy it is to take this apart and why it's kind of a modder's dream. Um, but I'll go ahead and progress with the remainder of this video, assuming that, you, uh, that you're up to speed on how to take this thing apart and uh, some of the features that it offers. So what we're going to be doing today to take advantage of these 3.5 millimeter jacks, um, these will actually, if you plug something into it, by default they operate as a fourth and fifth mouse button. Um, something that the X Keys L Track doesn't actually come with standard. Uh, and it's extremely, extremely simple. So this should be a pretty quick video. But what we're going to be building is a, uh, a very uh, kind of Frankenstein uh, switch that, that you can plug in if you have some spare uh, switches laying around for, for a keyboard or, or really any switch um, that, that just requires a, a simple connection. So, but basically, this operates like this, you take this, it's a 3.5 millimeter jack, plugs right into the back of the mouse. You could pick either fourth or fifth mouse button, and then you have a working button. So if you if you wanted to get fancy with it and create like a side housing or something here to actually hold the switch for you so you could operate it with your thumb, more power to you. I don't have a 3D printer and that's a little bit beyond uh, something I'm capable of doing right now. So, <laughs> so we will stick to just the soldering, uh, should be hopefully informative uh, for those of you that uh, just like to tinker around with things like myself. And let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing to discuss before we jump right into soldering things together are the tools that we're going to need and the components that we'll need to make this work. So obviously, the first thing you'll need is a X Keys L Track. I believe this should work with a CST version of it. Uh, this is the Pi Engineering X Keys rebranded one should all be the same. I wouldn't worry about it if you have a different one. Um, we are not going to have to take this apart. You're just going to need it, obviously, to test it, and that's what we're making it for. So this will be moved off to the side for the remainder of the video, but you will need one of these. Uh, next thing that you're going to need is a 3.5 millimeter mono cable. Now I say mono, it's extremely important that it's mono. You'll know it's mono because it only has two lines, and this is going to be your grounding and your power line. Do not try to do this with a, uh, normally when you see these jacks, they're like audio cables. And the easy way to tell, if you're not sure, if you go on Amazon and you try to find these and you're not sure which one it is, this one only has one ring. I happen to have a audio cable over here for my guitar setup. See how that has two rings on it? This has one. This is the one we want with the one. So again, this is audio. This is just a very generic has just a jack end on it, but with two long prongs. This is going to have, the audio has a lot more cables in it to handle all of that audio transfer and whatnot. So again, you can get a pack. I got a literal pack of these, I think it was four, off of Amazon for like seven bucks. They're extremely cheap. Um, aside from that, you're just going to need some switches, just some general two prong switches. I happen to have a bunch of Cherry MX blue and brown switches from some of my keyboard builds laying around. So I will be using one of those. Um, but again, feel free to use any switch. If you don't have one, you could buy one for literal pennies, uh, just a two prong switch for pennies off of, uh, off of Amazon. So nothing crazy here. And if we look at the finished product, all we're going to be doing is just soldering to those two uh, pins on the bottom of the switch. That's it. So don't overcomplicate it. You don't need a, a ton of things here. Um, the only thing that you absolutely will need is a soldering iron. And I have a pretty fancy one just because I like to tinker around. I am not a professional solderer. Just full disclaimer there, I'm a programmer that just likes to do this for fun. So please don't judge me too much. Um, but feel free to use even just a five, $15 Radio Shack soldering iron. It'll be more than enough for what we're going to be doing here. So let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, we have the soldering iron heated up to 370 degrees Celsius. Honestly, for what we're doing here, it's probably a little too high. That's just the temperature I usually like to work with um, for desoldering things. So um, we'll make it work. Um, if you don't have an adjustable temperature on your device, don't worry about it. Um, you, like I said, you could just use a, a very simple soldering iron and plug it in. So what we're basically going to be doing here is taking these two pins. It doesn't matter which wire goes to which one. These are extremely simple switches, extremely simple. All they do is they take a ground and they take a power and you can really hook it up to whichever one you want. And it really doesn't matter as long as there's a ground and a power. So we're just going to be soldering. We'll just pick the back. So we'll say red cable goes there, black cable goes on this pin, 
And we'll go ahead and do those solder joints. I'll fast forward it for you so you don't have to watch how painful it is watching me solder. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing. We're using a Cherry MX Brown because Browns are probably one of the worst switches ever made and I need to find a way to get rid of them and I couldn't bring myself to throw them away. So let's go ahead and you can watch me and please feel free to follow along. Um, I don't have a way to hold these, so bear with me. Now, one thing I like to do now, again, this is a difficult connection. I don't have another pair of hands or any pliers or anything to hold this for me. So what I like to do is get solder on the tip of my soldering iron. And then whenever you bring it down, it's much easier. You could just apply that solder just like that because it's sitting on there and you don't need to try to do anything kind of fancy um, when, you, uh, when you apply it this way. All right, so there's our first solder joint done. Again, uh, fast forwarded through a lot of that, but I just like to, again, this is a really terrible solder joint. So uh, again, just quick quick and dirty video here, but, uh, but basically you apply that solder to the back of the soldering iron, you pop it on there, and then you don't need to worry about trying to have three hands trying to hold your solder at the same time. It's just a, a thing I've learned. So let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and knock out this second one here. So that completes our second joint there. And you can see we have them both on there. Nothing pretty, but that is all we should need to get a working switch. And we are basically done. Now, if you've stayed with us so far, we have a working switch soldered together and we are ready to go ahead and try it out on our L-Track. Uh, so let's go ahead and fire up just a mouse tester. We'll plug this thing in and see if it works. Now, what we have here pulled up is just some very simple mouse tester software. It's the first mouse tester that comes up when you go on Google and type in mouse tester. Um, it works okay, and uh, I'll explain. Um, so it works for most of the primary mouse buttons, but when you use the forward or backward, which are the fourth and fifth mouse buttons, because it's in a browser, um, it'll actually either go forward or backward in your browser. So you actually will navigate off of this page. So it doesn't test those very well. So what we'll test is, do the mouse buttons work? If the answer is yes, then we'll try out our switch and that should be able to go backwards or forwards throughout our web searches. So um, let's go ahead and try the mouse buttons here. We have our left click, right click, middle mouse button. You can see all of our buttons work fine. And now if we wanted to test, can we go back throughout our search history? Do we have a working back mouse button? Here's our newly created switch. We'll press that. And there we are back in our Google search. We'll press it one more time. There's Google again. Press it one more time. There's mouse search again. Press it one more time. We're back on Google. So there you have it, a working switch for the X keys L track took literally all of about three to five minutes, less than $12 worth of parts, assuming you have a soldering iron already. And uh, again, very, very simple to get set up. And that concludes today's DIY session. I hope you enjoyed. If you did like what you saw, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you didn't like what you saw or you just wanna let me know what you think, please feel free to do so down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. I actually got this idea from one of you guys commenting on a different video. Um, and it does lead to me doing things that I think are cool. So <laughs> please keep the ideas coming. Uh, it's a lot of fun to do this stuff. I love sharing with you guys. So thanks again for watching.